How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're gonna to be looking at a weird manufacturing defect in a Chinese replacement carburetor. So let's get right into it. So we have a Craftsman 828 here. This snowblower was featured in my what to inspect when buying a used snowblower video. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the top right of your screen as well as down in the description down below. That was last week's video and I'm just going to be doing a quick little follow-up video. So this snowblower, we inspected everything and we purchased it used and it was in good enough condition that we figured we could fix it up a little bit and make a little money on it. Now when we bought this snowblower, the person that we bought it from mentioned that it was always hard to start, but we took a can of carb cleaner with us and when we sprayed carb cleaner into it, it fired up and it ran fine. So we knew right away that it was uh, some type of carburetor issue, possibly a primer line issue and that the carburetor simply wasn't priming. So we have since put a brand new carburetor onto the machine and it runs fine now, but I'm gonna show you something interesting with the carburetor that we removed. So I have the old carburetor disassembled and laid out here on my workbench. When we pulled the bowl, you can see there's the tiniest little bit of dry sediment in the bottom, a little bit of debris, no big deal. So the carburetor was clean. The bowl gasket here is in great condition. It's brand new. And this carburetor here looks to be like your average China replacement carburetor for a Tecumseh. You guys can see that it is missing the Welch plug right there. Normally there is a Welch plug that goes there. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm going to get to why this carburetor is no good in a second. The parts that we've stripped out of here, we have a gasket that we can reuse. We have a plastic float. Those are always nice to keep because on the older OEM style carburetors, they have the brass floats on them and they actually braze them together. The two halves are joined and they kind of weld them and fuse them together. And every now and then the braze breaks and your float leaks. So uh, it's nice to have these parts and a brand new needle valve and hanger. So what is wrong with this carburetor? Why would it run perfectly other than revving up every now and then, but be hard to start? Well, the snowblower wasn't priming. So if we look at this carburetor, you can see that it looks to be in excellent condition, right? It looks fairly new until you come right to there. So what I'm gonna do is spin this, and you guys see that? That's a hole in the carburetor. So it's a good time to explain how these carburetors prime. Basically, you're going to have a tube that comes to that little inlet right there, and you're going to have a one-way pump, and it's just an air pump. So you press down on your primer bulb, and it pushes air into the carburetor, and when you let off, there's going to be normally a hole in that primer bulb that's going to let the primer bulb expand again. So what happens is that primer tube comes into that inlet and that inlet goes right to this hole. Now, like I said, normally there is a Welch plug and you guys can see that there's two grooves that they cut in to allow the air from the primer bulb to go through here. So you have to imagine that this carburetor is gonna have the bowl on it and it's gonna be sealed with this gasket and there's fuel in the bottom of the bowl. Now, that's sealed, so what happens when you pump air into the bowl, the only place for fuel to go is up the main jet. So when you prime your carburetor, it pressurizes the bowl, that fuel has nowhere to go other than up the main jet, and then it squirts the fuel up the distribution tube there, and with your choke plate closed, you get less air and more fuel, so it creates more suction in the carburetor, which gets the fuel into your engine, and then obviously once your engine starts up, you can take your choke off and it will run normally. But here's the thing. Like I said, the carburetor looks to be good, but it has that little crack in it. There is no way for the bowl to pressurize because every time you go to pump air into your primer bulb, it's just going to escape through that hole, which basically makes the primer system non-functional. Now, if you were on a budget, you could probably go ahead and just take some JB weld and patch that hole up but because I have a business to run and I like to give people guarantees like I showed you I stripped the parts off of this and I'm just going to go ahead and throw this in my scrap aluminum bin and I've already gone ahead and installed a replacement carburetor on the snowblower. So I can't even believe that the snowblower ran as good as it did with that hole in there and that has to be just a defect in the manufacturing process. So the manufacturer will have a sand mold and then they pour aluminum into that sand mold. And sometimes you get these little thin spots 
and uh, that thin spot at some point just gave away and you guys can see the blue under there. So at the end of the day, it's not a big deal. I get some parts that I can salvage. This bowl is great. Uh, these China carbs actually have nice thick steel bowls. They don't uh, get the pinholes in them like the uh, older OEM Tecumseh aluminum bowls and uh, I also get a new gasket as well. So all in all, like I said, not that big of a deal. I've already gone ahead and replaced it with a high quality aftermarket carburetor replacement that's on there the machine runs and this is just a quick video to show you guys that uh, I guess yeah you do get what you pay for and just to give you a little additional information the OEM carburetors for these Tecumseh Snow King engines whether it be like a 8 horse a 9 horse or a 10 horse these OEM carburetors can run to like $85 some of them um, upwards of maybe 100 125 and these aftermarket carburetors believe it or not you can pick them up for like $20 some of them are 25 some of them are going to be maybe upwards of 30 to $35 and the quality Quality all depends on the vendor that you're buying it from. Over the years, you guys could probably imagine that I've picked up quite a few of these, pretty much figured out which vendors sell the good ones, and I buy them in bulk because every winter, a lot of times there are carburetors that I clean and I make sure the pilot jets are clean. I make sure that the main jet is clean. I go in there and I could clean the carburetor multiple times and I put the carburetor back onto the machine and for whatever reason, it just doesn't run right. It has maybe a little tiny sputter to it and me being who I am, I just can't let a machine leave my shop if it's not running perfectly. So for $35 to get a quality aftermarket carburetor and to spend maybe the 15 minutes it takes to swap it over, the machine ends up running perfectly. My customer ends up being happy, which makes me happy. So that's why I do stock a lot of these aftermarket carbs. They make life a lot easier when you just have a machine that wants to be a little tricky. That's all. And I just wanted to say that in my six years of doing small engine repair, this is the first time that I've actually encountered this issue. So it's not like it's super common. This is definitely an uncommon issue. But like I said, for the price of these things, I just went ahead and replaced it. The aluminum was just so thin that it ended up just cracking and falling away, whether it went inside of the carburetor or outside of the carburetor. We can't be too sure. And how long this has been affecting that snowblower, I'm not too sure either. Like we said, the snowblower ran just fine. When we go and buy a piece of used equipment and the customer says that it's hard to start, we just bring a can of carb cleaner, spray it in, and if it fires up and runs, then at least we know that it does have spark and it does have compression, and I can usually fix that for not a lot of money invested. Now, I was going to include this in my upcoming OEM versus aftermarket carburetor comparison video. I've been filming this video for the past year, maybe even a year and a half now, but I figured this was just a good one-off video. Now that will be an upcoming video, so you guys are definitely gonna wanna check that out. I've spent a lot of time filming it. Basically, whenever I've had to replace an OEM carburetor with an aftermarket carburetor, I've pulled out my camera and I've filmed the process of just the little tiny things that I've had to do. If you remember the Briggs & Stratton China carb replacement on that Toro riding lawnmower, or with the engine in the back. We had to do a little bit of modification to the air box to get it to work. Sometimes you have to drill a hole, sometimes you have to tap some new threads, but there's always little things that you have to do with these aftermarket carburetors. And like I said, I've been filming this video for a long time, so it's gonna be this definitive comparison when you look at aftermarket versus OEM carburetors. But that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload videos every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.